Welcome back to another video of Your Daily Scales. Now, basically, this is a series where I teach how to play uh, basically all of the scales on the piano, all the major scales, for a beginning piano student. And so, basically, that's what this series is. And it's also a bit of a companion series because I'm going to be teaching some really simple classical music in the future as well. And if that classical piece happens to be in one of these major keys, I'll say to come back if you don't already know how to play this major key and you don't already know the scale very well, to come back and watch one of these videos and practice on the major scale that is in that key and so that's kind of what these videos are used for and basically in every video I teach you a different scale so let's take a look at what today's scale is so the scale that we're going to be looking at today is A major. Now, A major has three sharps, as you can see here over here. So we've got F sharp, C sharp, and G sharps. When you're playing the scale, don't forget to play those uh, sharps. Now, if you're just starting off with piano and you haven't ever played it before, and you're looking at this A major scale video, you'd want to go back and start off with the video that I made on C major and work your way up to A major from there. Because if you don't know anything about piano and you're just starting off and you decide to learn the A major scale first, you're going to be missing out on some important stuff and also some important scales that you should know. So you want, you'd want to start off with the video I made on C major and work your way up to A major. Now to play the A major scale is really simple, and in fact it actually uses the same fingering that the other scales I've so far reviewed on this channel have, including C major as well as G major and D major. So that's another reason that you can go back and watch those videos to further help you memorize the fingering of this scale. So to play this scale, we start off here on A with our thumb, and then we head right up here to C sharp with our middle finger. Very simple. And then once, once we get up here to C sharp, we're then gonna, gonna want to tuck our thumb under to D, and then head right up here to five, just playing our fingers in that order, and also remembering to play F sharp and G sharp. Once we get up here to five on A, we're gonna wanna head right back down to uh, our thumb on D, and then once we get down there, we're gonna wanna cross our middle finger over to C sharp, and then head right back to A. Very simple. So for the left hand, the first five notes are also really, really simple. We start off here on A with our pinky and work our way up to uh, E with our thumb. And you play the notes just right in that order with those fingers, five, four, three, two, one. Very, very simple. So once we get to uh, E with our thumb, we're going to want to cross our middle finger over to get to F sharp and then head right up to A. And then once we get to A, we're going to want to head right back down to E. And then once we get actually to F sharp here, we're going to want to cross our thumb under to get to E. And then from E, we're going to want to head right back down to A. So let me show you how A major works on the keyboard. So first I'm going to start off with the right hand by itself, and then I'm going to play it with the left hand by itself, and then after that I'm going to play it five times through with the metronome, both hands together to give you an idea of what practicing it will sound like. So the right hand of A major is pretty simple. We start on A with our thumb, and then we head up to C sharp, which we land on with our third finger. Then we tuck our thumb under to D, and we head up to A. Then we head back down to D, we cross our middle finger over, and then we head back down to A. So that's how the A major scale sounds. And as you noticed, there was a G sharp in there, which is one additional sharp from D major, which is the previous scale that I've played on the channel, which only had F sharp and C sharp. But A major also has the G sharp. So if you're playing the A major scale and you're forgetting really any of these sharps, but particularly the G sharp because it would be the newest one, then you wouldn't really be playing an A major anymore and it would have a much different sound. For example, if I leave out that G sharp. You're not playing an A major anymore, it has a much different sound, and that's something to not do when you're practicing it. You always want to play the correct sharps for the correct scale. So now let me show you how the left hand of the A major scale works as well. So we start with our pinky on A, and then the first five notes we just play with all of our fingers in that order. From here, we cross our middle finger over to get to F sharp, go to A. Remember to play that G sharp. We head back down to E, and then we go back to A. So that is how the left hand of A major works. So now I'm going to get the metronome out. I have it set to 76 beats per minute, and then I'll play it through you five times for you. All right, here we go. First time. Second time. Third 
more time. Fourth time. Fifth time. So that's what practicing the A major scale will sound and look like when you're practicing it at home. Now, of course, with your metronome, if you want to start off by playing it slower than 76, which is what I have it set to right there, then you can totally feel free to go ahead and do that. Whatever speed is comfortable for you to practice with on the metronome, that is the speed that you should start off with. And then once you get comfortable at playing it at that speed, then you can move up the metronome just a little bit every time you play the scales through or something like that, and just slowly get faster and faster as you become better and better at playing the major scale. Now playing the contrary motion of the scale, which we're going to be talking about right here, is also quite simple. The right hand of the contrary motion is actually exactly the same as the right hand was for the parallel motion, which we talked about over here. So if you're good at doing this, you're going to be good at doing the right hand here for contrary motion. The left hand is actually where it gets different. So instead of starting on the low A, we actually start on the high A, and your thumb are going to actually be playing on the same exact note, which is going to feel really weird, but that is what we're supposed to do here. You could play them an octave apart, so you could actually play this A on the low A and then go down from there, but I think we're just going to do it just like it says in the sheet music here. So to play this, we're going to want to have our thumb on A, and then we're going to want to work our way down from the high A to this C sharp, so we're going to want to play one on A, two on G sharp, three on F sharp, and then from this F sharp, we're going to want to tuck our thumb under to get to E. So then from E, we head right down to A, like we were doing before. Very easy, one, two, three, four, five. And then once we get to A, we head right up back, five, four, three, two, one. And then once we get to our thumb on E, we cross our middle finger over to play F sharp and head home to A. Very easy. So let me show you how contrary motion works on the piano. So basically, as I said, the right hand of it is exactly identical to what we've already done before, which is called parallel motion. So I'm not going to talk about the right hand because it's exactly the same, but I will mention the left hand and I'll show you how that works. So instead of starting with our pinky on the bottom, we actually start with our thumb up top and then basically we just head down from there. So we start off with our thumb, like I said. We head down to F sharp, remember that G sharp. Then we tuck our thumb under to E. Then we head down to A, go back up to E, cross the middle finger over to the F sharp, and then remember the G sharp, and head up to A. So that's how the left hand works for contrary motion. So let me get the metronome out, and then I will play it hands together five times through for you. Here we go. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. So that is what contrary motion will sound like on the piano. As you can hear, it has a much different sound than playing it in parallel motion. It's much clashier, and it also has a much different feel than playing it in contrary motion because you kind of have to have more independence between your hands when you're doing it because at one point you're doing the two sharps that are in a row, which is F sharp and G sharp, but at the same time you're only playing one sharp in the right hand, which is the C sharp. So that can get kind of confusing. And as we keep adding uh, sharps to the music, to the scales, it's going to become increasingly more difficult. So what I'd probably say to someone who wants to practice on the contrary motion as well as the parallel motion is to not work on contrary until you become very good at playing the parallel and then you can add in the contrary motion scale into your practice once you become really well versed with playing the normal scale in parallel because I think that will help you to learn the contrary motion. You could try learning it straight off but I think it would probably provide a bit of a learning curve and might be a little bit frustrating. 
Now, one final thing I wanted to mention about on the major scale is the relative minor of each major scale. And I've already talked in my previous videos about how to find the minor scale of a major scale. And this is how it works. Basically, you take the root of the major scale. In this case, that's A, because that's the key we're in. That's the note we started on. And there's two ways to find the minor scale. The first way is to find the sixth note of the major scale you're in. So if we take A major, A is the first note. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, that is the root of our minor scale. So our root of the minor scale is F sharp. So F sharp minor is the relative minor of A major. And the other way to find the relative minor is to simply head three half steps down from the root of the major. So if we start on A, we go one half step down, two half steps down, three half steps down. That gets us to F sharp once again, which we already know is our relative minor. So that's two ways to find the relative minor. And the way the relative minor works is it's the major scale, except starting on a different note. And as a result, it has a much different sound. And it just it's basically an entirely different scale, but it has all the same notes of the major scale. So it's one additional thing that you can practice on when you're practicing your major scales is also to practice the relative minor of each major scale. And this is what it sounds like. has a much different sound, a much different feel, and that's just something kind of interesting about the minor scale. Hopefully you found this video on the daily scales to be uh, informative and helpful for you, whether you're a beginning piano student or someone who knows a little bit about how to play music and they want to become better at what they do. Scales are really helpful for all of that. It doesn't really matter what type of music you want to play or what you know, what you want to do with your musical skills, whether you just want to learn more classical pieces and play them, or compose brand new music of your own, or improvise and do play solos. Playing scales and knowing music theory like that really helps you do all of that. And so if you're watching these videos and learning and practicing on your scales every day, it's a really great help. So hopefully you found this video uh, informative and helpful. Like I said, if you want, you can go check out the rest of the video series. And also, if you want to subscribe and hit that button up there on the right hand side of the screen, make sure to do that because I'm going to have lots of cool uh, videos of really simple classical music from some of these awesome books here from the 1800s. So if that sounds cool and you want to learn how to play some really fun, simple Bach pieces, make sure to stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.